Hey guys, I'm the 50s Kid. This is an E46 BMW and we're continuing with the M54 Rebuild Project video series. In this video, I'm going to be removing all of the upper timing components uh, such that we'll be able to uh, remove the cylinder head once we remove the head bolts. So anyway, let's get started. So if you want to retime an M54 or M52 TU engine, you need a set of these timing tools for the double Vanos. Um, I got these on eBay. I will put a link in the description. Okay guys, already one mistake that I've made is not putting the engine at top dead center on cylinder number one before I removed the Vanos unit from the front. Because what happens is these little adjuster cups here wanna move when you start rotating the engine. So that's why I've installed the uh, timing adjuster plate on there. That way it's gonna stop those from moving out and you know coming out all the way. And that way I can go ahead and rotate the engine and find top dead center. Trusty screwdriver. Let's see, it's coming up pretty high there. But how do you know you're on top dead center? The valves. The two valves are gonna be facing one another. And as they aren't, we gotta keep going. See, now they're coming up and now these two valves are facing one another. Now you're at top dead center on the compression stroke on cylinder number one. Both valves are up, so all the valves are closed, or, or the valves on cylinder one are closed. And that's top dead center. That's where you want it. These two cam lobes have to be somewhat pointing up and pointing towards one another. There we go. So the screwdriver is enough to get us most of the way there, but not perfectly there. You'll notice that there's a timing mark here and there's actually a mark on the crank pulley. I put a little bit of Sharpie to accentuate it. It's actually a, a divot in the metal. So you'll, you'll be able to see it easily, but I just, I don't have a white Sharpie on me and I should have used that. I, I wish I had that. So I'm gonna rotate this around until those two marks are lined up. Now we've got it perfectly at top dead center and I will be able to lock it with the locking pin that comes with my timing kit. This is what the timing pin looks like, comes in your timing kit, and it actually fits down here in this hole right here. There's supposed to be a plug on that hole that you pull out. I don't have the plug. So I'm just gonna go ahead. I've already sort of taken a drill bit that was closest to the size of this thing and kind of twirled it in there to sort of clean it out from whatever gunk might be in there. And it seems to be all right. I can push it through and get it through. And just to make sure that that pin slips in, I think I'm gonna rotate the crank around slightly, make sure that I can't, and I cannot. So that thing slipped right into place, or almost. Hold on, let's go back the other way. There. See, now it's in there. Now I cannot move it either way. So we're totally locked in top dead center. And I can see that my mark was just a hair to the right before. Um, I'm just gonna chalk that up to parallax error because I'm looking at it from down above and all that. So the only reason I installed this front plate again was to make sure these little cups didn't pop out as I was rotating the engine over um, while I was finding top dead center. Now that everything's all good, I'm gonna remove this thing. So the next thing I wanna get off is the chain tensioner down here. It's a 32 millimeter socket. I actually don't have a short 32 millimeter socket, ironically, but I do have a one and a quarter inch socket and that happens to fit. So make sure I'm on off here. It's a snug fit, but it does fit. So now that I got that cracked, should be good. I'm assuming this is gonna drip a little bit of oil. Okay. So there's our chain tensioner assembly. And it's just a spring tensioner, that's all it is. I think it gets filled up with oil as well through the oil hole on the front. 
let's proceed to disassemble the rest of it. Um, I'm gonna lock the, uh, the secondary tensioner down with the pin that comes with my timing kit, just to kind of relieve the tension that is on it. Just makes it a little easier to pull this, uh, this top chain off. That's the only reason I'm doing it. So it's basically tens. Now that I'm cracking everything free, we're gonna lose the timing. You know what, we'll do one side at a time. Pull out the little spring washer. It's marked F for front. So now we'll do this side. This one also has a little washer here that is also written front on it. So these ones are E8s, external torx. And now, because we have the tension off, should be able to get these out. Actually, I think I, what I wanna do is take out the little cups from the inside before I do that. Way it makes it even easier. So that's loose there, as is this. Now that's gonna be there's gonna be a little washer in front of it. Not washer, but spacer, whatever. So I'm laying everything out on a little, little bench here, just in the order that it comes. Not that that's absolutely necessary. You'll be able to reference my video or anybody's video for doing this or the written instructions, but I just, it's, it's my practice to do things that way. That way, if anything happens, I don't get confused. You know, what if you don't have a video to go on? Lay things out in order. So those are the sprockets along with the chain. When you take this part off and you go to lay it down, be careful to just keep tension on it. Don't let it come off of the chain. That way you don't mess up your alignment. The reason you want to do this is the reason I'm doing it is because I know that there's a problem with my alignment tool that comes with the kit. Uh, there, there are two studs for right here that are on the alignment tool tool and they're kind of spaced a little bit too far apart. Thank you to one of my viewers who told me that because you, you are correct. I have the version that has the wrong tool or the mistake on the tool. He ground his stud down rather than doing that. I'm just going to keep the alignment right here. That way I don't have to mess with it. And in fact, I think what I'm gonna do is put zip ties around the sprockets here, here, you know, here and here. That way the chain won't fall off of the sprockets because um, I'm gonna bag these parts for, you know, much later, you know, when I put them back on after my rebuild's all done. That way the alignment won't be messed with and, you know, it'll all be good. Let's see what else comes off. This, this will come off as well. So now we'll pull off the secondary chain tensioner. It's gonna be four number 10s. And there are three on the top. Short one there. These two are medium length. 
The one on the bottom on the front was the longest. And there's our tensioner. I'm gonna get these bolts off next. We need to remove them anyway, but this one is just slightly interfering with getting on uh, this bolt right here for the lower guide. So, 13s. So now we can remove the two bolts for the tensioners, or the, I'm sorry, the lower chain guide here. Okay, let's get those bolts out first. Wow, that one's really long. So definitely need to pull that one out first. Can't just get this tensioner out of there until you get that bolt out of there. So there we go. While we're here, again, because we're taking the cylinder head off, there are two more E8 bolts that are in either side right here. And this actually, this really messed me up when I was in the junkyard trying to pull a cylinder head off for the first time. I didn't bring my E8 with me. And that was a sucky day. <laughs> so that's kind of a medium length bolt compared. And this one on that side is shorter. All right, so now we can pull off this sprocket. Try to get it off the chain here. Like that. So the chain, we're gonna pull it off of the outside of the camshaft. And you don't have to worry, it's not gonna fall, if you don't keep tension on it, um, it's not gonna fall off of the, the sprocket on the crankshaft because there is a little ledge right where the chain is. Um, the ledge is sticking out from the timing cover and that ledge prevents the timing chain from falling off of the sprocket. So that ledge is always holding that chiming chain pretty tight. So don't worry about that. So that's it for removing all the timing components. At this point, the only thing holding the cylinder head to the block are the head bolts. And we'll be doing that in a future video. Um, I Next up, I will be putting all of the components back on that I just took off and showing you how to retime the engine. That way you have that video ready for you because you know it's gonna take a while before I actually get to that point myself. I need to pull the whole block out of the car and rehab it and there's gonna be a whole lot of videos in between. So rather than make you guys wait, if you're just doing like a head, a head gasket job yourself, you'll have the video for uh, putting everything back in time and you'll be all good. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please click like, please subscribe. I'm the 50s Kid. Thanks a lot for watching.